Um, all right, before we get on to our next storyteller, um, I want to say a couple things. Um, a lot of people ask me after shows and things like this, and I really mean that, not like, you know, sometimes people say that and it's not really that people ask them, uh, but a lot of people come up and they ask me how we find the storytellers for these events. Um, and the honest answer to that question, not so much for this show because it's our first one in Boston, but generally the way we get storytellers is people come up to us after a show and they say, you know what? That reminded me of this thing that happened. Do you want to, has to have it on the stage? And there'll be things like, I one time thought I wanted to be a naturalist, and then I saw an actual crocodile and almost died. Do you think that might be an interesting story? And we're like, yes. Yes, yes that's, I think an that that's an interesting story. It's the almost died part. That's the interesting it part is. there, it in really case is. that's not clear. Um, but so, uh, you don't have to almost die. Uh, we want to hear your stories. So we're going to be doing more events here in Boston, so you can come up and tell us about it. Um, after the show, you can also email us, ben at storycollider.org. Brian at storycollider.org. Uh, very simple. We also uh, publish written stories on our online magazine. So if you're afraid of microphones, and you know, that's a thing. Some that's people fine. are. That's it's okay. Fine. Um, we have a place for, for written stories in our magazine as well. So we'd love it if you would send those to us. And with that, let's get on to our next storyteller. All right. Uh, our next storyteller... Uh, she's been a friend of mine for, for many, many years. We worked together at the Improv Asylum uh, on the other side of the river for, for a while. She is an amazingly talented stand-up comedian. She's the co-producer of the Women in Comedy Festival, which was just here in Cambridge and Boston uh, last month. You can see her every Sunday night at Improv Boston, just on, uh, on Prospect Street down the road here, 9 p.m. It's called Stand Up Sundays. Please welcome to the stage Maria Ciampa. Thank you, thank you all so much. Um, hello, Harvard and MIT professors and educators and other assorted geniuses. <laughs> all right, so I was a junior in high school and I had a huge crush on my physics lab partner. Not one of the hosts, <laughs> uh, not one of those guys. Uh, I had a huge crush on him, but I was so embarrassed about it uh, because he's one of those guys, he's up to no good. Like, he's, he's the guy that would get there early to class and write these physics, elaborate, accurate, violent physics problems involving our teacher, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, and, and one of them, for example, would be um, uh, Sully is, we called him Sully, why not, uh, Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> Sully is uh, skateboarding at a speed of 30 miles an hour, and he falls from a cliff from 100 feet. At what speed does he hit the flat concrete face first? Um, he didn't, he wasn't trying to make friends with the professor. He was not going to go anywhere with his life. So I was really embarrassed that I had a crush on him, but I was obsessed with his neck. Anyone? Ladies? Just me. Um, he had a very sexy neck. Sexy neck. Um, and he was one of those guys, you know, in the mid-90s when that hairdo for guys was in where you shaved the bottom half and made like a ninja ponytail. Oh, no good. No good. You don't want to bring him home. No thanks. Um, so I, I had a big crush on him, but no thank you, Justin Carr. That was his name. Um, and so forget it. No, nothing happened. And then a few years later... I'm at a friend's party, and I bump into him, and oh well, he's not doing dark physics problems anymore, so I decide, let's start dating. It's going to be fun. Uh, so we were dating. We're dating for a while. A few years later, I'm at Smith College. He's at UMass Amherst. Those schools are really close. So Justin, why don't you just live with me in my dorm room? Why not? Uh, so he's living with me in my dorm room, and uh, he every now and then goes out to go to class in Amherst, comes back to the paradise that is Northampton, with all the lesbians that we all love and know. Uh, and so we're there, and I'd just bring him food from the Smith kitchens. I'd be like, here's some Pop-Tarts, here's a loaf of bread, here's some cookies, here's some cake. Delicious, he loves them all, he eats them all. But then he starts like getting sick to his stomach, and I don't know why, and he doesn't know why. He's like, I think I have an ulcer. I'm like, don't stress out, it's fine, it's just whatever. Uh, so he starts to get sick, we don't know why. And then at one point, um, uh, my sisters and I go on spring break. And I don't mean like sisters like Smith. We're all sisters. I don't mean like that. I mean like my, my, my two younger blood sisters, Chrissy and Sarah. We go spring break, Hawaii. It's an amazing time. We leave Justin and the rest of the boys at home. It's awesome. That's another story. Um, so we, we do that. We come back. Justin picks us up from the airport. And he looks really sick. 
This guy, he's six one. He couldn't have been more than 130 pounds. I was only away for a week, but he looked really sick. And we were all like, Justin, what's going on? You don't look so good. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I don't, I don't feel so good. And it's a perfect impression of him, by the way. Um, if you don't know, I'm um, perfect impression. Uh, so we we're like, what's going on? So, you know, we didn't have uh, very good health insurance. So the doctors didn't know. And so we started doing our own thing where we would just like figure out what food is making you sick and excluding foods, trying to figure it out. Uh, nothing worked. But then we, we remembered, oh, his dad has this thing where when he eats bread, he gets itchy, like his skin gets itchy. It's a form of celiac disease. Turns out, yes, Justin has celiac disease. That's what it is. And the way... I explain it to people now is like, uh, Justin, he has an allergy, he's allergic to wheat. Not weed, uh, wheat. <laughs> if he were allergic to weed, he'd be dead. <laughs> uh, but I'll, hmm. A lot of people, they don't understand, though, what like an, aller uh, an allergy to wheat is. So I have to explain to them that Justin will get really sick to his stomach if he has anything with wheat in it. So he can't have anything like bread or cookies or cake or pizza or beer. And people are like, no, 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 no. I understand. He's allergic to fun. Got it. Uh, and, but I still... I still eat stuff with wheat in it because survival of the fittest. Uh, I'm the strong one in this relationship. And, uh, but every now and then, I'll eat something with just a tiny bit of wheat in it, like a little cracker or a whole cake, whatever, don't judge. And I'll forget that I ate something with wheat in it, and I might have just a tiny crumb somewhere on my mouth. I, I don't even know I have it there. Tiny crumb on my mouth, I'll go to kiss him, and he'll be like, mm, 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 mm. and that makes me feel pretty. <laughs> Good for our relationship. Uh, so that's how I explain it. I explain it very simply as a wheat allergy, but in fact, that is untrue. Uh, Justin has celiac disease, which is, I'm sure some of you know, an autoimmune illness. Um, basically, uh, it, it attacks the villi, the tiny little hairs in the intestine, and their job is to, to produce digestive enzymes and to absorb nutrients from food. So when that shit is messed up, forget it. <laughs> you're malnourished, you're thin, you feel like crap. Uh, so that's his deal. That, that's what was going on. But finally, we figured out what was going on with him. So we're like, great, fine. What that means is no gluten for you. Gluten is the protein that's found in like wheat, malt, barley, rye, some oatmeal. Now you guys know. Hmm? Uh, so, so we're like, fine, we're never going to have that. You, you'll never eat that. No problem. So we're, we're really happy that we know that. Uh, and I vow never to poison him again because I was bringing him Pop-Tarts and cookies and cakes and <laughs> loaves of bread. I was like, here you go, poison for you, my dear, I love you. Uh, so I vow never to do that again. And uh, a few years later, we decided, hey, let's get married. I'm going to marry this guy that can't eat anything. Okay, wonderful, good decision. Um, so I do that. We get married, like, in the vows. I'm like, I promise sickness and health and richer and poor, and I promise not to poison you. Like, it was that kind of vows. Uh, and so we do that. And and then a few years later, we're hanging out. Marriage is going well. Uh, it's movie night. Friday night, line up some movies, line up some snacks. You guys know it. Don't be jealous. It's an amazing marriage I'm in. You too? OK. Uh, so we're doing that. And, uh, and I'm like, OK, well, I can make some nachos, pop some popcorn. I'll take the ice cream out now so it's good and soft. You guys know how it goes. And so uh, and he's like, yeah, but I'm, I'm still feeling really kind of full from all that rice pasta that I ate. Because you can do that. You can substitute wheat pasta for rice pasta. And, I, and I, he says it like that. And I look at him, and he doesn't look so good. And I was like, rice pasta? I didn't know we had any rice pasta. He's like, yeah, there was a thing of Tupperware, put Tupperware of rice pasta. And he's kind of lilting, and he looks green and weak. He's sweating a little bit. And I'm like, no, that wasn't rice pasta. That was wheat pasta. You're going to die now. Uh, so it turns out, once again, I poisoned him theme. Uh, so I, and then, you know what? It's too bad because if you don't get along with your significant other, what a perfect way. Like, oh, I poisoned you by mistake. Meh. But like, I didn't, I really like him. I don't mean to poison him and I keep poisoning him. Oh, uh, so that's what was going on. And after that happened, I was like, okay, we're going to really just, we're going to lock it down here in the kitchen. Signs up over the toaster. Gluten-free toaster. There's no wheat in this toaster. No gluten or you'll die. You know, like a, and then I brought, I bought this kind of tea and for some reason the tea had barley in it. So I wrote in Sharpie all over the box, do not drink, Justin, you'll be dead. You know, like, so our kitchen became this very dark, like death trap. 
for my husband. Uh, that's just, and I thought that that was the thing to do. But every now and then, still, he would get sick, and by mistake, I would poison the man that I love. And I was talking about this recently with one of my friends. I was like, I keep poisoning him. I don't know how to stop. I don't mean to do it. Uh, he's being careful. I'm being careful. But he gets sick, and when he gets sick, he like he takes a nap for six months. That's what happens when you have celiac really bad and, and you eat some gluten. It's bad. You just take a nap. You try to recover. Um, and she says to me something really obvious. She was like, Maria, how about this? How about you just make sure there's absolutely no gluten in the house at all? Like nothing with gluten. And so I'm at the point right now, everyone, that I'm trying to figure out what do I love more The seduction bread at Whole Foods or my husband? Thank you very much. Back to your host.